Happy Friday, everybody. It's Good Friday. That means it's a Friday for Easter, which is very exciting. I know Easter's a little bit different this year. We have no Easter egg hunts. Church will be from home. But I still wanted to tell you guys the Easter story. What does Easter really mean using some Easter eggs? So I have 12 eggs and each one contains something that represents a part of the Easter story. So, let's see what is in this first egg. So, we have some green, a green leaf. This is representing a palm branch. Now, last Sunday was Palm Sunday, and that represented the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And as he was riding through the city, people were throwing their coats on the ground and palm branches, and they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Just so excited that Jesus was coming through Jerusalem. Now, Jesus was having his last supper with his disciples. And during the meal, he decided to wash the feet of his disciples. So he got a towel and wrapped it around his waist. He got, I'm sure, a big, some kind of bowl of water. And he washed each foot of the disciple. He used the towel to dry it. And then also during that meal that he had with his disciples, he... They had communion together, what we would call communion. They had bread and Jesus broke the bread. And he said, this is my body that's going to be broken for you. Right? He meant when his body was going to be broken, when he was put on that nail to that cross. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he said, drink from this cup. This represents the blood that's going to be shed for you on the cross. So they drank the wine or the grape juice in the cup. And so we still do that today. We call it communion. So a lot of times we do it at church. You might do it with your family. We might eat bread or crackers with some grape juice. And that's communion. We're remembering what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Our next egg, I have a flower. This represents the garden. So after the meal was done, Jesus and some of his disciples went to a garden to pray. So Jesus told some of his disciples, you stay here and pray, and I'm going to go over, over there to be alone and pray. And, you know, Jesus knew what was coming. He knew that he was about to get arrested and tortured and died on the cross. And so he was saying to God, is, you know, is there any other way for this to happen? But, you know, this was part of God's plan. We were all born into sin and we needed a savior. And so Jesus trusted God. And so <clears throat> as he, they were in the garden praying, some Judas, one of Jesus' disciples and the, some soldiers um came to arrest jesus now <clears throat> there were some people in that day that they didn't like jesus they hated jesus and so judas one of jesus disciples betrayed jesus he traded jesus he said i know where he is you can go arrest him i'll tell you if you pay me and so for 30 pieces of silver judas, judas betrayed jesus and so Judas and the soldiers came to where Jesus was and they arrested him. They tied him up with rope. They arrested him and they took him to a place where they put a crown of thorns on his head. Now I have some thorns that came off of my rose bush, if you can see these pokey thorns. And I don't know if you've ever um, maybe touched some, thorn, touched some thorns on a rose bush. It's very painful, it hurts. Now the thorns on that they put on Jesus' head were way bigger than this. They were big thorns. And they put a crown of thorns on his head. They spit at him, they mocked him, they beat him. 
And once they were done treating Jesus that way, they, they hung him on a cross. They nailed Jesus' hands to a cross and his feet to a cross. They crucified Jesus and Jesus died. <clears throat> One of the soldiers came to Jesus on the cross and before they got his body down, he stuck a spear in the side of Jesus. Her blood and water came out and Jesus had died. And now this was part of God's plan. So this is not the end of the story. Now, some of Jesus' friends wanted to bury him. And so they took his body off a cross and they wrapped his body in some nice some linen. And they put him in a tomb, which is like a cave. And they wanted to protect his body. And so they put, they rolled a big stone over the front of the cave so no one could go in and out. So Jesus had died. <clears throat> now, something happened three days later. Let's count to three. One, two, three. Jesus rose from the dead. We have an empty egg to represent that empty grave. Jesus is alive. Now, all of this was part of God's plan because we were born into sin, right? We've all sinned. We've done bad things that we shouldn't have done. And because Jesus died on the cross for us and rose again, that means that we don't have to die in sin. We can ask Jesus into our heart and he can forgive us of all our sins. He can become our best friend. And then one day we can go to heaven and so this is the true story of Easter, right? What Jesus did for us, dying on the cross, raising from the dead. And so this weekend, this Easter weekend, I want you to be thinking about this story and what it means to you. And tomorrow I'll be sending out a lesson that is a similar lesson about Jesus dying on the cross and raising from the dead. And so I encourage you to do that lesson with your parents. There's some activities that you can do. And I hope you have a great weekend.